All right, so I'm back. Uh, had a little break. Um, still just kind of fiddling with stuff. Uh, not doing, not doing anything major. Um, but I'm 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 pretty close to being to being happy with this. Uh, I think I do want to tweak the the train here a little bit. Go to flatten. Then increase the size. I think I can get it to just kind of come up. Um, um I'm gonna I'm gonna smooth it back out again, but it's uh I just I, I felt like the divot there was a little too big, felt a little unnatural. Um I wanna smooth out some of this. Like if you look at the terrain that we're making, like we're making very flat, soft, smooth hills. And while you are going to get uh, erosion along certain channels, right? Like you're going you're gonna to see some patterns like that. Um, you know, you if you're going with one terrain type, you would you would want that terrain type to match uh, all the way around. So that's kind of what I'm focusing on: just tweaking stuff and getting things in. And you know, for the most part, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased. I think uh, I think it's going to be fine. Um, I think there's whoop, uh, both getting the uh, getting some noise back in the environment. Um, just to add a bit of variation to those those far distant areas. But uh, the other thing that's weird is that we're seeing it without shadow, um, and I can actually fix that really quickly. So when you're looking at uh, light details, which I'm gonna kind of move up here. Um, that is actually not a light, but <laughs> that is my atmospheric fog. Uh, where did my light go? Here it is. Hiding. Oop, 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 nope. This is what the world outliner is for. Um, which I, which I completely forgot was here. Um, skylight. There we go, light source. Alright. Uh, so the uh down here um so this distance is for um how far out those shadows go uh but you got to think cuz there's only so much resolution spread across so much distance so um You know, there is definitely a limit. There seems to be something going on, though, because the... There we go. Yeah, so it's going to bias higher resolution. Um, uh, lighting closer to the camera. So that's probably what's happening way out of the distance, is that it's it's just too low resolution out there. And that actually can be messed with with the cascade distribution, where you can even it out, or you can prioritize it closer to the camera. Um, where, uh, <clears throat> yeah, as it says here, control whether the cascade is distributed closer to larger to the camera. Uh, so larger means more resolution closer to you, uh, and then you can you can spread that resolution out. So it's it's usually pretty standard of a high resolution. The other thing you can do is actually enable uh, ray traced shadows, and this distance controls when um, when it's actually going to switch to those uh, switch to those shadows. Um, I'm a big fan of them. I think they can be, uh, they can be really, really useful. Uh, I think that is where they switched. Um, the thing is they're also not, they're not dynamic, so you want to, you want to use your, uh, you want to use your regular, um, your regular dynamic shadow map up close, and then switch it out. Because if trees are blowing and stuff like that, you actually won't you won't see those uh, you won't see those changes. Um, so I'm going to do actually some other stuff. I'm going to go in and do a bit of uh, a little bit of vert painting, um, just to kind of you know blend in some of the uh, some of the other terrain types. Um, maybe not. Yeah, painted that backwards too. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I'm eventually going to go in with mud and stuff like that and try to get some variation. Like, let's do that now. Um, so I'm going to go in, mud is the, mud is the green channel, I believe, or so I'm going to paint white, painting white in, now because it's already flooded white, it's a little tricky, so I'm actually going to paint in the, the color itself. Um, I'm going to just paint in the actual color in all the channels. So yeah, we're getting, we're getting that, uh, that mud to come in nicely. Um... However, we're erasing in all the channels, so I'm going to actually have the erase channels switch back to white. So I can paint back to the paint back to the color that I originally wanted. Um, yeah, so one of the things you're going to notice is that the height falloff isn't really doing its, doing its job as well as I wanted to. So I'm going to go back into the blend shader and just mess with some of those contrast settings um, that I made. Let's see if we can, yeah, that's a little bit better. You know, we're still seeing remnants of the the, the vertex vertices, and that's kind of the it's kind of the disadvantage with using that height node is that you, with the softer blend, you do suffer from uh, a little bit of harsh transitions. Like it doesn't, the height map isn't as influential as you would want. Um, and I'm actually going to try and uh, try and fix that really quickly. Uh, oop, that's landscape. So material blend. Let's go to the base material. And uh, looking at the height map for red, um, I'm actually going to uh, use the power node, which is multiplying a texture by itself. Ooh. Freaked out a little bit there. Uh, and it's essentially like, uh, you can think of it as along the lines of like increasing its contrast by running the level on it. Um, but it should help with, uh, um, it should help with the, uh, there we go, uh, the contrast that we're looking for. Because I won't have to crank the contrast so high by default, and then it won't, it won't weigh in the, the vertex coloring quite as strong. I'm just gonna crank this down to help if we watch what we're doing. Um, it's making making a little bit of a difference. Um, the other thing is I'm not super pleased with how much the mud stands out. I'm actually gonna go back to the material and look at the uh, the roughness setting for the the red. Um, and I'm going to go in and create a roughness multiplier. So red roughness multiplier. Started at one. This is just going to give us more control. Uh, and this is a material property. Um, I know we'll be able to actually, you know, look at the uh, red roughness and be like, oh, you know what? We really do want it to be stronger. Maybe, maybe we, <clears throat> maybe we don't. Maybe we want it to be something like that. I also don't like the red, uh, the red UV scale. I think is a little weird. Oh, that's base. Um, we're gonna increase that tolerate just a little bit. See if we can get. Uh, um, Some some different uh, ooh. So one of the things you're seeing is that the if I decrease it too low, there's not enough resolution to support the height map. Um, so I'm I'm gonna actually go in and reverse what I did at least a little bit. Um, so that you can actually take advantage of the tessellation a little bit. Um, you know, it's it's also a matter of uh, you know, texturing preference. Like I didn't, I never really wanted to go in super strong with the mud. Just kind of, you know, certain spots uh, around uh, around the base of 
some of these rocks I thought would be cool to have. Um, have some of this variation in there. Uh, just to break up some of the ground textures. I, I don't need these open anymore. And again, we'll be doing more of this later on. Um, there's always going to be um, tweaking like this, just kind of as you go. Like I like, you know, I like a little bit of what that's doing. Um, uh, so I'm going to keep going with it. Um, I'm actually going to paint in the black here and get this look a little bit more like some of the cliffs that are also around. That. We're, we're rapidly getting to a point where uh, um, you know, pretty soon I'm going to want to start uh, um, thinking more and more about uh, the foliage. And the foliage is going to be very interesting to populate because uh, I think it's very easy to overdo it and just make it like crazy dense, but it's also easy to um, like what uh, like the hardest part about it um, would also be to you know making sure that you have um, have like enough density, right? And I don't think I'm going to be going for like a super lush forest here. Um, I can already I can already tell that this is I think it's going to fit better or something else. I think it's going to be you know somewhat something of a more uh, or like a highland area. I'm also still, you know, constantly keeping my eye out for weird natural terrain shapes. Like, I think this is just weird. Uh, where it's, um, it's very unnaturally, uh, un very unnaturally built. If I can offset it a little and go back and grab more rocks and just keep playing and playing and uh, slowly just making making progress I think uh, definitely need something right here um, and you know I some people may be wondering a little bit like why I'm putting so much work into the ground before I start building everything else up. And you know, it, it really does matter. Um, the, uh, the, the, the act of, the act of just building everything up realistically on the bottom, uh, it it, uh, it inherently is going to help the believability of everything that comes afterwards. Um, so I'm trying to vertex paint, and I keep accidentally erasing. Um, so I'm painting in red and green and blue. Ha! Huh. It's painting grass back. I would like to paint in mud. There we go. Something I would love to love to see would be like a more like interesting like uh, vertex paint brushes. Um, like the ability to do just more more interesting custom work. Uh, I'm also starting to wonder about the normal intensity of this. Again, that's you know. Also a little bit of just me in there, but um, I'm I'm gonna wait until I've got mesh density in here because there's still what is that hill right there? Okay, um, uh, there's still like a lot that's going to be on the ground uh, that is going to make up a lot of the scene. I don't want to uh, I don't want to go overboard before I know what's gonna actually going to be there, if that makes any sense. Nope, oh, don't like that. 
I also really don't like this. Cool idea, but it's... Uh, the directionality is a very nice element. Um, but the, uh, the overall impact... And I think I'm going to counter everything. I'm going to lower this hill. There we go. Yeah, and lower this one too, just so it... Oops the silhouette of that rock stand out. There. And maybe play with this one a little. Pull it forward. I'm just picking apart tiny little parts of the image. Uh, <laughs> should we just continue to work? Right, so uh, lighting. Um, you know, I... I don't know what time of day I want for this yet, and that's actually something I tend to play with a lot at the end, um, just because it's that's that's a little bit of who I am uh, when it comes to personal projects. Uh, sometimes I know exactly what I want it to be, um, and and sometimes I don't. Uh, you know, looking at uh, looking at Dartmoor and some of these like natural highland areas, you've got. Tons of different weather types that can roll in, but we want to kind of take advantage of some fun tech and, and really push things as far as we can. So I think if we can find a nice compromise between moody and uh, cinematic, we'll be quite happy. Uh, one of the key things that is definitely missing is fog. Um, I'm going to uh, hit some exponential height fog. You can see instantly adds a ton to the realism. Um, of uh, of everything. Um, so let's look at the details of that fog. Uh, one of the things that I love to mess with is the height fall off, right? Like that's a pretty that you know what that's actually pretty pretty cool. Just like a really bleak looking day. Usually I go the opposite. I go like a very a very high file off, fall off because it is a height fog. Um, and then, you know, uh, using that to fill in parts of the environment. Um, but, uh, let's be playing with that. You can pick start distance, the fog and stuff, so there's... Uh, Fun. I kind of wish the the height fog exponential would would grow down a little more. Um, one of the things that we can do uh, is that we can mess with the fog occlusion through light shafts. That's going to potentially um, change a little bit. I wonder if we can. Oh, oh crap. Uh, wanted to keep that, so I'm actually going to turn off colors determined by the fog, and I'm just going to control it all manually. Um, actually, kill that by hand. I wonder if the... I think, actually think that the sky dome, yeah, the sky dome is occluding the... Uh, um, the, the fog, but we'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide the sky dome for now. Um, should gonna select all these rocks. Um, move to a folder. Control up rock. Oh, there we go. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with all the terrain chunks. To create a new folder, chunk. I'm just gonna move this back up here. It's way too difficult to do it horizontally. Um, but you can see, like that was that was a very very small amount of change with this huge cinematic payoff. Um, yeah, cinematic as I like sit inside a rock. Um, so I think uh, I think we're well on our way. Look how much that that faded out. Uh, 
you know, some of that distant detail. And I can still see stuff that I want to change, and I think that's going to continue for a little bit. Um, but I probably should be really careful when I do that. Nope, I don't like what I did. <laughs> uh, in fact, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to go in and add, uh, add another rock right here. I just felt that like this kind of this kind of lip right here felt very unnatural. I was gonna see if lowering it down would um, would do anything about it. Uh, nope. I definitely want to keep. Now I'm attached to it now. I don't want to change it. <laughs> Yeah, it's the right kind of detail in the wrong kind of spot. I want it to be up there. There we go. Um, but yeah, this is pretty cool. This is coming along pretty well. Uh, so let's uh, let's do a couple things. I'm actually gonna raise, I'm gonna raise some more terrain back here. Um, I guess I want to pull the camera further back. I don't think I will, but it could be cool. Um, I'm actually going to go into the... I think it's time to paint some foliage. Um, and I don't know what that's going to mean. Uh, let's see what happens when I just plop some trees. Uh, they're huge. Of course they are. Um... look nice. They look pretty. I wish they were a little bit more, uh, um, like, uh, uh, I'd made them a little more gnarly. Um, uh, you know, again, I think it's going to be funny because I think they're going to make really good bushes. Maybe not amazing bushes, but still surprisingly good bushes. Um, it's funny now. Now seeing, now seeing the updated, uh, now seeing it at a distance. I think the leaf speed is, or leaf intensity is a little, a little high. There we go. Yeah, I mean that the the high try count is definitely a conscious decision on my part. Um I'm a big I'm a big fan of foliage looking as good as you can get it and we have we have LODs and we can push stuff so far when it's up close that like we might as well. We might as well just go a little crazy. Um But yeah, I think uh A little better look at things. That lump is bothering me. Yeah, I think this is going to be neat. I think we need. Uh, I think we'll be able to, you know, put some groves of uh, trees around. I think like. Uh, I'm still. I still like the idea of. This area over here catching light. Um, yeah, I know how to fix this hill. Sorry, I'm kind of bouncing all over the place right now. Uh, fix it. I'm going to be happy. Nope. Like a lot of the time when you see those like artificial lines, like I'll tell you how I knew I was going to fix it is because I saw the line that was getting drawn from here all the way along that ridge. So what I thought to myself was if I were to break that line up, um, would it help separate the shape? And I was right. It, it actually, it actually helped quite a bit. Um, gee, geez, the smooth tool. 
so strong. Um, uh, yeah, so that that makes me quite happy. I'm a little worried about the, the the silhouette of this rock not being quite as fascinating as it could be. I'm gonna tweak that a little bit. There we go. Yeah, so that little dip there now more clearly signifies something. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add more rocks along this top ridge because uh, I know, based off of the narrative that I'm kind of creating in my head about this place, um, and and you're like, oh, you haven't talked about narrative, but I mean, I have, right? We've been talking about, or we, I've been talking about, like, you know, rocks and shapes, and, like, as by describing this area visually, we give it history, we give it, you know, um, we give it uh, options and reality, so it's, uh, the fact that there are rocks in here means that these hills are made up of rocks, which means if you're going to have a bunch of hills, uh, odds are a couple of them are going to have, like, craggy tops, um, in some form. Uh, and that's what I wanted to do, is I wanted to give that, give the hill, um, uh, just a little bit of, uh, little bit of breakup. Like that. Uh, and I may do another one over there. Um, the left side's actually pretty nice. Uh, I think one thing I need to do is... Uh, kind of add more... more interest over... right here. And the reason I say that is because it's it's kind of a key transitionary area, right? It's right where, it's where you're going into terrain. Um, there we go. Like wanting to have like a a little bit of that that kind of that interest right along there. Okay, I overdid it. Um, and actually, I actually think rocks are going to be the way to go with that. Uh, flatten it out. Ironically, it's getting completely covered up by the rock in front of it, so let's move it farther out. Uh, and this is the power of what I like about these rocks. It's just very easy to add that, that little hint of detail. And if there was more resolution in the terrain, I would consider doing it in the terrain, but there really isn't. Um, I'm doing that on purpose because, like, you know, one... I didn't want to have to model all that terrain. You can imagine how long it would have taken me to do even this with the terrain. Um, and arguably, I could or uh, done all of this, or all of that terrain with this these mesh pieces. The reason I'm doing the reason I did want the mesh pieces though is I wanted that vert paint and control. I wanted the I wanted that. You don't have as much control over terrain uh, blending. Um, so it was important that I had that in in some form. Um, uh, yeah, so, hmm, trying to figure out how I want to go about this. I think the next step is adding in some, some plants. I think that's a good next step. Also adding in some rocks over, over here. Um, because it's looking a little weird. And there's times like this where I wish I could just squash this one little bit of terrain, um, but I can't. Uh, actually, I could. You could. You could put like world position offset into the vert color, and then have that be the, the changing factor. Um, okay. So we're also getting to a point where I'm starting to worry a little bit about visual noise and composition, um, and. With the visual noise, how that affects the composition is your eye needs to rest on the environment. So I'm looking for areas, you know, again, I've kind of lost my my sighting in terms of the 
um, uh, how I want to handle the, the the composition itself, but I want to make sure that there are areas like here and there uh, that are blank, right? That can give me that eye rest that I uh, that you know good compositions can have and need. Um, I'm still worried a little bit about the lighting. I may actually even lower this guy just a smidge to see if I can make up for that. Uh, nope, because that looks really weird, um, having that there like that. Okay, well, let's call it with that. Uh, so I'm going to save... Um, and let's start playing with foliage. So I'm actually going to use the, the foliage tool for uh, a lot of this. Um, the way it works is you just drag stuff in, um, and then you can set properties for it. Uh, so you can say how often it appears, and you know, uh, I think it's got to recompile when it first pops up, so I'm going to... Actually, I know that this is too small, so I'm going to say two to three times. Uh, I also know that I want I want both... Uh, both of these, so two to three times, um, and you can say, you can pick like uh, angle offsets and stuff like that, but that's that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to check out this material, and kind of get a feel of the, of the wind and stuff like that, I'm not super not super keen on it. I think the the wind is a little small and a little fast. So I'm gonna drop that down to that. Bring up the wind intensity a little bit. Uh, increase one of these to really big wave size so we see it move through the environment a little. I'm also starting to think a lot about the texture. I'm not really a fan of some of these these MIP settings. Uh, you can bias it. I may just tell it to not not do MIPS. Um, for the